In this video, I'm going to be exploring the view of the anarchist thinker and revolutionary Mikhail Bakunin on the work of Karl Marx. Bakunin's opposition to Marx involves several separate but related criticisms. Though he thought Marx was a sincere revolutionary, Bakunin believed that the application and implementation of Marx's political forms of organisation would necessarily lead to the replacement of one type of repression, capitalist, by another type, state socialist. Bakunin himself provided the first translation of sections of capital into Russian. The Italian anarchist Covelli, himself close to Bakunin's ideas, produced the first discussion on capital in Italian, while yet another Italian anarchist, Carlo Caffiero, again on Bakunin's wavelength, produced an abridgment of capital that was considered by Marx himself as the best yet written. It was then edited, introduced and annotated in French by Bakunin's closest associate, James Gouillard. As the Response de Quelques Internationaux of 1872 noted, many of the Jura internationalists, comrades to Bakunin, had read Capital. Quote, they have read it, and all the same, they have not become Marxists. That must appear very singular to these naive types. How many, on the contrary, in the General Council, are Marxists without ever having opened the Book of Marx? End quote. Bakunin always had profound respect for Marx's economic work, in particular capital, and even during the height of the campaign of hatred and slander waged against him by Marx and his followers, Bakunin maintained this favourable view of Marx's economic analysis. However, Bakunin opposed what he considered to be the economic determinism in Marx's thought. Put in another way, Bakunin was against the idea that all the structures of a society, its laws, morality, science, religion, etc., were, quote, but the necessary after-effects of the development of economic facts, end quote. Rather than these things being primarily determined by economic factors, such as the mode of production, for example, Bakunin allowed much more for the active intervention of human beings in the realisation of their destiny. Bakunin was very much a materialist and he criticised Proudhon for his idealism, which could fly in the face of the reality of a situation. However, his materialism and his understanding of how society was structured and functioned was not a me mechanistic concept and gave room for the actions of determined individuals and minorities. Quote, the action of the working class must be the synthesis of the understanding of the mechanics of the universe, the mechanics of society and the effectiveness of free will. Conscious revolutionary action. There lies the foundation of Bakunin's theory of revolutionary action. End quote. More fundamental was Bakunin's opposition to the Marxist idea of the dictatorship of the proletariat, which was supposed to be a transitional state on the way to stateless communism. Marx and Engels, in the Communist Manifesto of 1848, had written of the need for labour armies under state supervision, the backwardness of the rural workers, the need for a centralised and directed economy, and for widespread nationalisation. Later, Marx also made clear that a workers' government could come into being through universal franchise. Bakunin questioned each of these propositions. The state, whatever its basis, whether it be proletarian or bourgeois, inevitably contains several objectionable features. States are based upon coercion and domination. Bakunin proposed that this domination would very soon cease to be that of the proletariat over its enemies, but would become a state over the proletariat. 
This would arise, Bakunin believed, because of the impossibility of a whole class, numbering millions of people, governing on its own behalf. Necessarily, the workers would have to wield power by proxy by entrusting the tasks of government to a small group of politicians. Once the role of government was taken out of the hands of the masses, a new class of experts, scientists and professional politicians would arise. This new elite would be far more secure in its domination over the workers by means of the mystification and legitimacy granted by the claim to be acting in accordance with scientific laws, a major claim by Marxists. Furthermore, given that the new state could masquerade as the true expression of the people's will, the institutionalising of political power gives rise to a new group of governors with the same self-seeking interests and the same cover-ups of its dubious dealings. Bakunin proposed that another problem posed by the state system was that a centralised government would further strengthen the process of domination. The state, as owner, organiser, director, financier and distributor of labour and economy, would necessarily have to act in an authoritarian manner in its operations. As can be seen in so-called socialist states such as the Soviet Union and Cuba, etc., a command economy must act with decisions flowing from top to bottom. It cannot meet the complex and various needs of individuals and in the final analysis is a hopeless, inefficient giant. Marx, however, believed that centralism from whatever quarter was a move toward the final state-led solution of revolution. According to Bakunin, quote, the political and economic organisation of social life must not, as at present, be directed from the summit to the base, the centre to the circumference, imposing unity through forced centralisation. On the contrary, it should be reorganised to issue from the base to the summit, from the circumference to the centre, according to the principles of free association and federation. End quote. This means that, in practical terms, that rather than being directed by a centralised state, an anarchist society would involve individuals and groups organising on a federative and decentralised basis. Workers' councils and popular assemblies, community groups and other groups would form horizontal networks through voluntary association to direct wider action that involved more than just their group. This should also facilitate the freedom and autonomy of the individual. Bakunin's predictions have been borne out by reality. The Bolsheviks seized power in Russia by hijacking the Russian Revolution of 1917. They talked incessantly of proletarian dictatorship and Soviet power, yet inevitably, with or without wanting to, they created a vast bureaucratic police state. Many state socialists and party communists claim this is down to the state being subject to so-called non-ideal conditions. However, the methods they suggest inevitably lead to these outcomes.